Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Compliance Advantage, Consolidate cons Compliance Needs with CSC. My name is Caitlin Alberta, and I will be your moderator. Before we get started, I'd like to make a few announcements. The audience will remain on mute for the duration of our session. However, you can enter your questions and comments in the Q&A widget at any time during the presentation. We will take time to answer your questions in a Q&A session with our speakers at the end of the presentation. At the bottom of your screen are multiple application widgets you can use. All the widgets are resizable and movable, so feel free to move them around to get the most out of your desktop space. You can expand your slide area or maximize it to full screen by clicking on the arrows in the top right corner. In the resource widget on the right side of your screen, you will find a PDF copy of today's presentation, information on our compliance services, and a link to the CSC blog. We encourage you to download any resources or links that you may find useful. Joining us today are Paul Matthews and David Jeffries. Paul is CSE's Director of Product Management for Service of Process and Representation Services. For more than 20 years, Paul has worked with the operations, service, and technology teams that support CSE's registered agent and service of process solutions. David is a Senior Director of Product Management for Global Compliance and Governance Services at CSC in the Wilmington, Delaware headquarters. David is responsible for driving the strategic direction of CSC's compliance solutions. With CSC for over 15 years, he has significant experience providing training, implementation, and consultative services to clients of CSC Entity Management. And with that, let's welcome Paul and David. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone, depending on where you're joining us from. Uh, my name is Paul Matthews. Uh, we want to welcome you and thank you for joining us today as we run through an overview of the advantages to a consolidated approach to meeting and managing your compliance obligations. I'm going to quickly run through the agenda and then we'll dive in. So today we're going to start with a quick introduction to CSC. Next, we'll talk about the current landscape and some of the challenges that organizations face in the marketplace today. Then we'll spend some time on what you should expect from a registered agent service provider. We'll talk about how that provider can support your organization through the complete life cycle of an entity. And we'll spend some time talking about some of the additional services that can expand the role and value that you get from that provider. Uh, we'll also put some focus on talking about some of the core responsibilities of an agent, uh, specifically handling with service and process. And finally, we'll close out today's session with a demo of CSE's Navigator platform, and we'll give you a chance to ask questions to clarify or address anything we don't cover in today's session. With that, let's dive in. I'm going to pass things over to David, and he's going to start with an overview of CSC. Great. Uh, thank you, Paul. And I also want to echo Paul's uh, comments in terms of thanking our audience for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. We're really excited for the um, content that we have to share with you today. And it's really my pleasure to have the opportunity to talk about CSC as an organization. So for more than 120 years, CSC has been the partner of choice for companies around the globe, trusted to handle everything from incorporating companies through maintaining compliance corporate transactional work, protecting digital assets from the threats of the online world, and really everything in between. CSC offers solutions and technology that keep businesses running, and that allows our clients to really focus on the important work of growing their business. CSC is globally headquartered in Wilmington, Delaware, and we are a privately held organization. Uh, we just celebrated the one-year anniversary of the biggest acquisition in the history of our company. In November of last year, CSC acquired the InterTrust Group, which has doubled the size of our company as far as uh, employees, uh, employee count is concerned, and also it has dramatically increased our global presence as far as the number of countries where CSC has a physical presence. And there's, you know, a fair number of stats here on this particular slide. The one that I'm really proud of is that more than 90% of the Fortune 500 utilize CSC for at least one of our services. And so certainly, registered agent is uh, something that we've done uh, for over a century. It's a bit of a calling card, so to speak. And we'll talk about that today, as, as Paul mentioned. But we're also going to talk a bit about where services that we can offer beyond registered agent and how they really tie together uh, very nicely. And so with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and provide a little bit of an overview of CSC services. There's certainly too much here to cover in one webinar. I think the takeaway from this slide is that we have a tremendous 
breadth and depth of services going well beyond a registered agent. Now, for the purposes of our webinar today, we're really going to be focused on the first uh, area, which is business administration and compliance. But effectively, what you're seeing on this slide is really what are five distinct business units in CSE as an organization. So business administration and compliance, fund solutions, transactions and lending, domain names and brand protection and capital markets. Really, again, it's in that top left where you're seeing things like registered agent. We're going to talk about entity management. Uh, global security management, service of process management, business licenses, and more. So that's really the area where Paul and I focus, and that'll be, again, what will really uh, revolve uh, the majority of our conversations around today as a part of our webinar. Before we go further, I'll turn things back to Paul to talk a little bit about the current sort of climate uh, that corporate legal departments find themselves in managing compliance. Thank you, David. So for companies that do business across multiple jurisdictions, uh, one of the major decisions you'll have to make is whether you use a single provider or decide to spread things over a group of different agent providers. Uh, as you think about that, let's, let's talk through some of the challenges you can face uh, if you decide to spread this across multiple vendors. Uh, first, one of the things you have to think about is that managing vendors can be very time consuming and the more vendors you have, the more that starts to become a full-time job. And the time you put into managing those vendors eats away at the efficiency that outsourcing is supposed to provide you to begin with. Uh, additionally, each of those vendors only has insight into a small sliver of your overall picture. So they aren't going to be positioned to offer any broader insights or to help you avoid making the same mistakes in different jurisdictions. Uh, the next thing you have to think about is the, the technology that comes along with these providers. So most service providers are going to include some form of technology to help support the work that they're doing for you. And if you are using multiple vendors, you now have to learn each of those tools and manage switching from tool to tool uh, with no real insight, or I'm sorry, no real opportunity to see all of your information in one place. Um, and then further, you, you'll get the same access You'll never get the same access uh, to support or attention from each vendor. Uh, each vendor is going to have their own approach to how they provide service. And, and, and honestly, you're going to spend as much time trying to hold them accountable to those commitments as you do getting the value and, and benefits of those services. Uh, and finally, something that, that can't be ignored, and, and this is perhaps the most critical among all of these, is as you splinter your uh, your services across multiple vendors, one of the things you're losing is the opportunity to leverage your whole book of business when you're negotiating pricing. So having inconsistent pricing, having uh, inconsistent content and format for invoicing, uh, inconsistent terms, all of that just becomes something that, that, again, eats away at your time and attention. And those are things that are too precious to give up easily for things that are not bringing value to you. So we, we've entered into an age where almost every corporate law department is faced with an increasing number of compliance requirements uh, that are also increasingly complex to navigate. And most of you are likely being asked to do this with fewer and fewer resources. That just is, is sort of the name of the game these years. And the expectation is that that shortfall in resources is going to be met with technology, uh, and outsourcing. Um, and, and rather than having to pick and choose which obligations can be neglected, um, again, if you're taking these obligations seriously, you have to prioritize choosing the right vendors and technology to partner with so that they can manage all those obligations effectively and, and you can keep your eye on, on the big picture. And, and again, what we see here in the graph is, you know, as we talk to organizations, uh, and, and we we see, you know, kind of how they respond to questions about what their biggest challenges are. It, it's managing those competing priorities. It's it's having a lack of bandwidth. And and again, it's it's trying to deal with inconsistent processes or antiquated processes. So as as the speed of change continues to accelerate, you have to be working in an environment that is built to. Uh, basically be 
agile enough to take on those changes and adapt processes and and services to meet them. And again, that can be very difficult when you're when you're kind of spreading things around. So when we think of the compliance space and thinking and, and start talking about you know the critical vendors in that space, one of those most critical vendor choices that you'll have to make will be your choice around registered agent. So let's let's start with the basics in, in terms of what should you expect from your registered agent. So minimally, they, they need to check the box. They need to provide you with a brick and mortar location in every state where you're doing business. Uh, and that that brick and mortar location has to be staffed and available during normal business hours. And that's primarily to be available for the receipt of service of process. And we'll talk more about service of process a little bit later in the presentation today. Um, but beyond those minimal check the box obligations, uh, an effective registered agent will not only be able to be there to receive service or process, but they'll also have an effective means for providing you information about those documents and rapid delivery of that information and, and the corresponding documents. Um, a, a good agent will also be able to provide you with line of sight and visibility into what's required to maintain your good standing wherever you're doing business. Uh, they should be able to provide you with some means of storing critical data and documents related to your entities and service or process. And ultimately, they should demonstrate expertise across this landscape and in all the adjacent services that your organization needs. So as, as you start to think about these expectations that you should have for your registered agent, you'll hopefully begin to differentiate among providers that, providers that are willing to do this work and those that are actually built to do this work. Um, while you have to at least check the box, you could be getting a lot more for the money that you're spending. Uh, CSC specifically has structured our offerings around building a complete compliance solution. And ra rather than just merely checking the box, we, we're aiming to deliver additional compliance insight and protections to customers using that are using any or all of our services. And we try to pack each of our solutions with both line of sight to the information that you need and, and also insights relative to that information to help you stay ahead of the curve as requirements change or grow. Uh, and before we begin expanding on that concept, I'm gonna turn things back to Caitlin for our first poll question. Awesome, thanks Paul. So let's get to our first poll question here. So currently on your screen, you should see, um, how are you currently handling your registered agent needs? So we're gonna, open this up to our audience. Um, please select one of the options here. And while we're giving them some time to answer this question, um, Paul or David, I'd like to hear what you think might be the most common answer. Paul, I'll have you, uh, I'll have you go first. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I think, you know, as we kind of look at the, the audience for today's call, um, you know, we, we see some, some, some familiar names, so hopefully uh, we're going to see a lot of people choosing option A. That's that's certainly where we'd like most people uh, to land. But I think uh, most of the folks on this call are either going to be using CSC or another commercial registered agent provider. Yeah, I'm with Paul. Maybe some with law firms, but I think most are going to be in that A and B column. So I guess we'll we'll find out in a little bit. All right. So let's continue and see what our results are. So you guys were right on the money there with CSE and an, or another commercial registered agent. So awesome. Thank All you right. to our audience um, for taking time to answer this poll question. And we will go ahead and continue on with the presentation. Thank you, Caitlin. And yeah, thank you for uh, participating in the poll. So it's a strong CSE crowd here, uh, but also, um, you know, looking to talk to folks that are not using us currently. But uh, before we get into some of the additional services that CSE is able to provide beyond registered agent, uh, we'll, we'll spend a slide or two with sort of a 30,000 foot view of what makes CSE a bit different than some of our competitors within the compliance space. And the first bullet point in that, that orange color, uh, I think hits, hits on something really important, which is a, a truly global provider with a broad range of solutions across the life cycle. And so sort of tying back to my comments earlier about the acquisition CSE completed last year, we have a, a physical presence in every major economic center. We provide services in over 140 jurisdictions, uh, with, again, with a tremendous breadth of capabilities. 
also, um, th that second bullet is near and dear to my heart, which is really kind of a mission of, of our business unit here within CSC, which is the combination of best in class service and award winning technology in a completely integrated fashion. And so the example that I often share it's sort of a rudimentary example, but I think it speaks to this power is that if you were to engage CSE, let's say to form a new entity, really anywhere around the globe, not only would that entity appear in our technology platform where you could see its name and where it's formed, the entity to type in the formation date, but the actual formation document, we call that the evidence of the filing would then automatically, pardon me, be associated with that company in our platform as well. And then beyond that, uh, our compliance calendar, which we'll look to highlight in the demo that we do towards the end of our webinar, would also then automatically, based on knowledge and rules, calendar when the next set of annual filings are coming due for that particular subsidiary. And just to take it one step further, if you were to engage CSC to prepare and file those annual compliance obligations, the calendar would be automatically updated so you can see where it is in the process of being completed and eventually see it in a completed status. And then that filing document the evidence, so to speak, of the annual report that would also then automatically be linked in real time to the entity within the technology as well. So there's this really powerful uh, marriage of this of the service and the technology coming to get to coming together. Pardon me, in really transformative ways that uh, our clients are able to reap the benefits uh, of the way that we're just structured in terms of service and technology being so tightly coupled. Also, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't touch on that second to last bullet, which is the security and availability. And so we go through tremendous effort uh, and, and annual assessments to ensure that our clients' information remains secure and protected. So there's a, a, an attestation that we go through called a SOC 2 Type 2 assessment. We can provide quite a bit of information on things like encryption and firewalls, intrusion detection and prevention, and really the lengths that we go to to ensure that our client's information, again, remains secure and private. And then availability is equally uh, critical, right? If the website is unavailable or if it's, uh, you know, available, but it's crawling, right? So the, the applications not only need to be available, but they need to be performant and responsive. And so we really pride ourselves in making sure that our technology is agile, flexible, modern, and and keeping up uh, with, with our clients, which, which it certainly does. And so, again, these are a few of the the factors where we sort of look at ourselves and say, this is really kind of where our value is uh, versus some of the, again, the other competitors within the compliance space. Now, something that we alluded to before, and I'll just uh, kind of use some of this animation to bring it more into focus, but we understand that managing companies or managing compliance is not a static exercise, but it's a very fluid and evolving situation. So whether you are at the beginning of the life cycle where you're forming an entity which brings certain compliance obligations, or maybe you're in more of that maintenance mode uh, where you're dealing with service of process, you're dealing with annual compliance obligations, dealing with licenses perhaps that need to be um, renewed on, on a regular cadence, uh, or kind of maybe you're in that expansion mode where you're qualifying in new jurisdictions, maybe you're doing a major acquisition. And so again, as these things occur, which they of course naturally do within your organization, Again, the, the, the value here is that CSE understands the phases of the life cycle and offers compliance services across the board. And then, of course, sort of at the end of that life cycle is what we're calling dissolve. But that's when you're looking to, you know, kind of wind up a business and take the appropriate steps, whether you're merging something out of existence or maybe you're selling off a series of assets. But that's also a critical component. And there, that's even something that organizations will do every so often in terms of what is often referred to as an entity rationalization, where sometimes you take a step back and say, wait a minute, why is it we have X number of entities and what, what function are these all serving? They had a purpose initially, but... You know, uh, now that it's been a number of years, maybe we need to go back and, and, and evaluate that. There's sort of a, an inherent cost that comes with you know, managing and maintaining an entity. And so, again, CSC does offer compliance services throughout uh, this particular life cycle. So now I'm going to turn things back over to uh, Paul. Actually, no, I'm going to keep this one. Sorry. Uh, we're going to talk about some of our related services. So I'll tee this up a little bit. And so uh, one of the things that you'll see as a part of the abbreviated demo that we'll do at the end of the webinar is a platform that we call CSC Navigator. And critically, this is the platform that brings our compliance services into focus. And it's the lens through which our clients can interact with the information that we're maintaining on their behalf or in more of an expanded fashion, they can work directly in those technology platforms as well to update information. And so when my colleague Paul starts talking in more detail about our service of process offerings, this will really, uh, I think, come into focus where we provide different levels of technology based on the needs of the individual organization and the individual user. So some of the things that we'll talk about that, again, <coughs> pardon me, come together in Navigator would be service of process management, uh, 
our annual report preparation and filing service. On the top right, you're seeing um, entity management, which is near and dear to my heart. This is where our clients can go beyond tracking basic vitals for companies and start managing directors, officers, and structure charts and minute books. We also, you'll see on the bottom of the slide, have services around business licenses for, from outsourcing to technology. We offer a range of corporate secretarial services that we'll talk more about called global subsidiary management. That's it's certainly a focal point of our business, certainly post acquisition of InterTrust. And then CC Matter Management becomes an extension of our service of process capabilities that Paul will discuss. And so uh, before we go any further, uh, Caitlin, I'll bring you back into the conversation to take us through our next poll. Perfect. All right, so you should see our next poll question on your screen. What are your biggest compliance pain points? So this is a multiple select poll question. So please go ahead and choose all of the answers here that would apply. Um, and we'll give the audience just a minute to answer this question. Paul or David, uh, what do you think we'll see most of here? Well, I forced Paul to go either. first the last time. <laughs> yeah, I think he's re returning the favor. Um, so some of the biggest problems, I think, honestly, pardon me as I work through my cold here, I think uh, maintaining good standing across all jurisdictions, that's sort of the lifeblood of entity management. I think that's a primary concern of folks and, and a challenge. Um, and then also being someone that works in technology, I think option D in terms of maybe not having a, a source of truth for all of that global information, I think, is also a challenge that we hear pretty commonly. So I would not be surprised, again, uh, time will tell, but I won't be surprised if we get a lot of responses for both B and D. Paul, what about you? Yeah, I, I would agree. I think those are the, the most common occurrences. Again, every organization is a little different, so you know people have the, the challenges that they have. But I think where we see kind of the, the most activity and, and concern is around getting that single source of truth. All right, perfect. You guys were on track for our last one. Let's see how you do with this. All right. Interesting. Okay, so we were right about the good standing concern, but then obviously we have a lot of folks that are uh, concerned about the challenge of uh, licensing obligations, which is understandable. It's a very complex uh, framework that you have to deal with, um, with all sorts of authorities that uh, govern uh, your your licenses and your entity. So we'll we'll touch on that a little bit later on in the presentation. So appreciate everyone responding to that poll. And then I'm going to turn things back over to Paul to talk in more detail about service of process. Thank you, David. So uh, as, as we have mentioned a few times, one of the core obligations for a registered agent is, is managing the intake of service of process for, for the entities that they're named as agent for. Uh, what we see here on the slide in, in the purple text is kind of the textbook definition and, you know, really uh, under that definition, service or process relates to that initial notification of a new lawsuit to the parties. Um, when we talk about service or process in the context of a registered agent, we have to broaden that, that definition slightly to also incorporate things like wage garnishments, subpoenas, uh, bankruptcy notices and, and some of the other items you see there. So other things that kind of move through the court system uh, that an, a registered agent might be served with. Uh, when when we think of you know what most organizations are kind of most concerned with relative to how service and process is handled, uh, it comes down to a couple of, of common challenges. So the first is the ability to uh, be available to receive that service or process and then make sure that the agent routes it appropriately within the organization. Uh, for most commercial registered agents and CSC certainly falls into this category, that means delivering documents electronically. It means delivering documents uh, the same day as they are received by the agent so that the, uh, the our, our customers have the maximum amount of time to respond to uh, lawsuits and other uh, types of service or process, all of which have some sort of ticking clock associated with them. Uh, and then as David has mentioned in previous slides, we, we have to do that while making sure that we're maintaining data security. So that means whether the, the data is uh, in transit uh, in the form of notifications to our customers or whether it's housed in any of our applications, we want to make sure not only is it uh, secured from a technology standpoint, but also access control, meaning, you know, making sure that only the people within your organization have access to, to the information related to service and process documents. And that would be based on those that have been designated by 
um, the decision makers in your organization. So again, having those access controls and overall data security uh, behaviors is something that you should expect of a registered agent relative to service or process. Uh, there are a host of other challenges that service and process can also uh, unpack, but uh, these, these are the ones we see most often. One of the things that we have really uh, focused on over the years is making sure that we have an appropriate service and process solution for every customer. And, and, and a one-size-fits-all approach just simply doesn't make sense there. Um, there's a big difference between organizations that maybe receive one to 10 pieces of service or process a year versus those that are receiving literally hundreds every day and, and, uh, and everywhere in between there. So what CSC has uh, gone to market with is a, a tiered offering and we try to make sure we're matching customers to the solution that's most appropriate to them. Uh, on the left side of this slide, you see our SAP manager solution. This is uh, included with our registered agent uh, service and is targeting you know, those customers with lower volumes, lower complexity around uh, the routing and delivery of service and process. Uh, the key focus on, on this application and this solution is to make sure uh, it has a high ease of use, uh, something that is easily uh, adoptable by an organization. So you don't really need extensive training to use it. Uh, usually we can kind of just put a user in there and they can, you know, we, we've built it to be intuitive enough where they can kind of see where they should go to retrieve things. Uh, and, and that's that's really the focus there is the, that ease of use and then just making sure that the kind of core actions that you need to do when you get new service or process can be done right from the application. As we move across the slide to the right into our SOP Pro solution, this is a, uh, a more robust solution, has uh, more features, has uh, greater support for customers who want to manage their workflow around service or process within the application. So where SOP Manager mostly anticipates that people will grab their documents and pull them out of the application to work on them. SOP Pro is uh, definitely geared more around that being a workspace where collaboration may occur uh, and, and that may be sort of the final final resting place. That might not be the right phrase, but uh, the, the final landing place for, for those documents. Uh, and then as we move further across and, and get into enterprise legal management, this is really uh, you know, a full featured application meant to support the entire life cycle uh, of legal matters, whether it's litigation or some other type of matter. So it allows you to not only receive documents from CSC, but also contribute your own documents. It also allows you to collaborate with uh, individuals inside and outside of your organization. Uh, so whether that's outside counsel or a member of a business team within your organization, uh, you can you can do some of that collaboration right within the tool. The tool includes robust uh, reporting and searching tools. Uh, and for both the SOP Pro platform and the enterprise legal management platform, we also have uh, strong integration capabilities. So if you need to send some of your documents out of the application uh, to, you know, to other teams that maybe use other tools within your, your business or other uh, vendors who may be managing a portion of that. So for example, if you've got someone who manages uh, wage garnishments on behalf of your organization, we can send those documents through an integration to uh, to those other vendors while letting you maintain the documents that you plan to manage in-house within the within the platform. So again, we're really trying to make sure that we can kind of meet customers where they are relative to their needs uh, for service or process. And with that, I'm going to kick things back over to David, who's going to talk about our annual report services. Thank you, Paul. And so, you know, at some point along the way, I probably refer to our registered agent business as our calling card, maybe bread and butter. Uh, but it, it's, you know, it's what CSC is perhaps best known for. It's been a core service for over a century. Having said that, our, I think it's probably fair to say that our second most popular service in terms of the number of, of, of organizations that avail themselves of it would be our annual report preparation and filing service. So first, let's talk about, you know, what are annual reports and, and what are some of the challenges? And so when we talk about an annual report, we're talking about an annual compliance filing, typically annual uh, compliance filing that is due at a secretary of state level or equivalent. And you'll see here on the slide that depending on the jurisdiction where the filing is due, it may go by a few different names. So for example, in California, uh, the term statement of information is typically used. You'll see things like uh, you know, franchise tax report, but fundamentally, again, these are uh, obligations due at a secretary of state or equivalent. And the criticality of course, is that failure to uh, submit these 
filings in a timely and accurate fashion can lead to a lapse in your compliance. And there's all sorts of uh, you know, negative repercussions uh, from that. So when we talk about challenges of organizations trying to manage this obligation, number one, uh, what's due when and where, right? Staying on top of the due dates. You know, some states are fairly uh, predictable, right? So uh, in, in Delaware, uh, Delaware makes it fairly simple where the LLCs are due at a certain time of year, corps are due at a different time of year. But then in other jurisdictions, it can be a little bit more complicated. It could be a situation where your fiscal year end plays a part of the calculation. Maybe there are jurisdictions like Colorado comes to mind where it's often referred to as an anniversary filing. So based on the date where you either formed or qualified in that state, it's going to dictate when the end report is due. And I think actually in the case of Colorado, depending on the year the entity is formed, the, the logic actually varies. So older companies are due at a different time than entities formed more recently. So it can be really complicated really quickly, especially if you have a large footprint of of entity uh, registrations across various states. And so that can be a challenge. Um, while there is some uniformity in terms of the information that needs to be provided to the states. Of course, it's not all consistent, so there's nuance that has to be accounted for. Uh, and then one of the questions is, where are you going to track all of this information? Where do we go to understand authoritatively who our active list of signers are? And where do we track things like the principal place of business and the EIN and the business purpose? And in some cases, there might be some uh, capital information that becomes relevant uh, to, the, to the filing. And so again, a lot of the challenges sometimes just stem from not even being quite sure where to go to gather the requisite information in a timely fashion. And then, pardon me, as, as the last bullet point mentions, again, failure to comply can be significant uh, beyond just sort of lapsing in compliance where you're dealing with uh, fines and penalties to reinstate or come back into a good standing. Eventually, if something is out of compliance for long enough, you could find yourself revoked. And the, the really the worst case scenario is that you really no longer cease to be an entity effectively losing the protections that the entity was created uh, for in the first place. And so that is the ultimate worst case scenario. Now, what is the service that CSC offers uh, for this particular challenge? And again, we call this our annual report preparation and filing service. And there's really kind of three uh, pieces, so to speak, of, of this service. The first is what we're calling pre-filing services. And so when organizations enroll for this ongoing service, we do an audit to understand what is the actual current standing of all of your entities and all the jurisdictions where they're doing business. Is everything in good standing, which would be uh, ideal, or <coughs> pardon me, are there some entities where they're in some sort of a negative status and there needs to be some remediation performed just to get them back into good standing? At the core of the service is really what we're calling filing services, where a CSC takes on the actual work of preparing and filing the annual reports on your behalf. Now, as a registered agent, some of the information required in these reports is something that we have uh, natively, so to speak, within our technology platform called CSC Navigator. So we'll know the names of those companies, where they're formed and qualified, dates of authorization, charter IDs, our compliance calendar, which I promised to show in the demo is going to automate visibility in terms of when the annual reports are actually coming due. So we've got a lot of this sort of as almost like a great head start. That said, there is definitely is information that we need uh, beyond what we're capturing as a registered agent. So things like signers, EIN, uh, business purpose, et cetera. So either uh, clients would provide us with that data in a secure fashion, or if clients are using our CSE entity management solution, which is the next uh, service that I'll talk about, uh, they could just capture that information in real time within CSE entity management, which then your annual report CSE specialist could in turn just leverage that data in real time to make sure that they're providing the most accurate and updated information for those filings. And then in terms of post-filing services, this really sort of harkens back to the integration that I talked about before between service and technology. And so fundamentally, when we do the filing, we're going to update the calendar so that you can see that the filing has been completed. We're going to take what we call the evidence of the filing, the receipt, if you will, that is proof that the filing was uh, submitted, and that's going to be linked automatically to the underlying entity the filing was placed on behalf of. And so that's all just sort of part and parcel to the way we deliver that service and how we give you that, that visibility and transparency through the CSC Navigator technology platform. So now I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I do, and it's, it's CSC Entity Management. This is really a focal point for me at CSC in terms of driving the roadmap in terms of the new features that we add to this technology platform. But before I get ahead of myself, let's make sure we're all on the same page when we talk about entity management, because it can be different things to different people. Sometimes when people talk about entity management, they're just talking about the overarching discipline of keeping companies in compliance. In some cases, when people say entity management, they're really talking about the need for services to keep entities in good standing. But in this case, we're talking more specifically or narrowly about entity management software. So this is off-the-shelf, purpose-built software that helps organizations manage 
information, documents, compliance events, structure charts around their companies. And so while this is a, a, a space that CSC has been in actually for over two decades in terms of offering a software uh, solution, um, interestingly, this is still really an emerging space that's becoming really, really uh, hot and attractive for organizations to get into uh, for the first time in terms of adopting or implementing entity management software. There was a, a survey in 2021, so a couple of years ago now, where uh, CLOCK, the Corporate Legal Operations Consortium, teamed up with the ACC, Association of Corporate Counsel Organization, and they did a global survey, and they connected with over 200 organizations across, I think it was over 20 different countries. And one of the questions was, you know, what are you using for entity management? And really only half of the respondents uh, cited the fact that they were using a technology solution. And so it's really kind of eye-opening that this is still an emerging space. And so many organizations, don't be ashamed if you're one of them, are using spreadsheets and share drives and doing their best to sort of you know keep their arms around their entity information. But fundamentally, there's problems with that approach. Number one, there's this lack of a central repository or source of truth that's the definitive record for where you would go to find that information. There's no automation. Reporting is, is non-existent, right? You're having to uh, sort of cobble things together. One of the other challenges that we see is that the legal department, which is most often tasked with uh, this responsibility, becomes a bit of a bottleneck where other parts of the organization have to constantly go to the legal department to ask questions like, who are the signers and what's the EIN? And you know, is this entity active or in this particular jurisdiction? Whereas proper modern entity management software can really create a culture of self-service where Again, you can have administrative users that are taking ownership of the information in the platform, but they can securely and intelligently permission individuals into view information so that whether it's tax or treasure or finance or any other parts of the business can get real time visibility. And everyone is sort of, you know, singing from the same songbook or working from the same playbook, if you will. And so the CSE entity management platform specifically, it certainly checks all of the boxes in terms of things you'd expect to see in terms of tracking directors and officers building structured charts, being able to create online document repositories, but it really goes well beyond that. Again, fundamentally, the power is the fact that it's integrated with our compliance services, so information flowing automatically into the tool. Not only do we have what I'll call a general framework for integrations, and Paul talked about this a little bit with service of process, but we, where again, people can, and clients can take information in CSE entity management and feed it into multiple downstream systems, but We've also made a number of strides in recent years with what I would describe as pre-built integrations. And there's two that I'll talk to uh, quickly. First being our electronic signature workflow. So we have a, a, a pre-built uh, partnership uh, integration with DocuSign. So for organizations that are using DocuSign, you can work within CSE Entity Management and very seamlessly push documents out for electronic signature. When those documents are fully executed, they're flowing back into the platform where they can be tied to minute books or document folders in the technology. More recently, towards the outset of this year, we launched uh, an integration with the Workday Human Capital Management HR system. And so, uh, you know, the HR system is typically the source of truth for employees, and a subset of those employees are individuals that are being tracked within our awesome director module. And so if a change happens to someone, it's often the HR system, in this case, Workday, that's the first system to really know about that. So whether it's a, a name change, a location change, a title change, uh, these types of things, again, can, can generate alerts and in-app notifications to our users to let them know that there may be a change that occurred in Workday that would necessitate an update to your officer and director information, which is critical because these officers, directors, and I say officers, directors, it could be members, managers, partners, powers of attorney, it's any sort of appointments that you want to be able to track. These are included in annual reports, not just here in the U.S., but globally as well. And so organizations have felt the pain of not having accurate information around directors, officers. And so this really helps add that, that real-time visibility to those types of changes within an organization. So the last service that I'll talk about before I turn things back over to Paul is what we call global subsidiary management. And this is a term that we use to describe a suite of global corporate secretarial services. And so the slide that you see here talks about some of the challenges that organizations face uh, in terms of operating globally. And I think one of the biggest challenges is just the sheer complexity of the regulatory landscape. It's not like there's US compliance and international compliance, as one of my colleagues likes to say, there's compliance in Brazil and compliance in Singapore and compliance in China, and it's not all the same. So each country has its own nuance. So what we bring to the table is centralization and, 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 and a proactive approach. And so a lot of organizations that partner with us are coming from really a fragmented approach where they're using a disconnected network of, of law firms or service companies. They might have some boots on the ground in certain countries, but the challenge is that they lack a source of truth 
for their information. A lot of times we'll have conversations, <coughs> pardon me, where we look to understand their spend and they candidly can't, they can't provide an answer because they're dealing with multiple currencies, there's challenges with time zones, there's just sort of a litany of challenges with managing a global portfolio of entities. And so again, what we bring to the table through our, our global subsidiary management offering is a single point of contact within one of our hubs, which could be in the Americas, in EMEA, or in APAC, a proactive approach where we understand what's due in what country where. So again, certain countries, you might have quarterly uh, board meetings. In another country, you need to file an annual financial statement with your annual return. And so all of those needed services are provided as a part of what we call annual compliance support. And then again, you've got that one provider to work with. We provide the overwhelming majority of these services in fixed flat annual fees. So there's budget certainty and understanding. And then also, uh, I can't resist uh, the final uh, uh, solution on the bottom there, which is the fact that CSC entity management, which we just talked about, becomes this core underlying foundational technology where all this information becomes available. So again, if you had us do, let's say, a global director change, not only are we changing the, you know, adding the new person and archiving the old person within CSC entity management, we're drafting the documents in dual languages. So there's a, a in-country language and then a working English translation. And we're tying those documents to those entities within CSE entity management in an automated fashion, just a part of that service. So what are the specific GSM or global subsidiary management services that we offer? We've got them sort of divided into three categories. Again, I, I mentioned this in passing, but annual compliance support. The idea that there are known things that we can prescribe that do vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So we're talking about preparation of annual general meetings, annual returns or equivalents, the updating of, of UBO registers or ultimate beneficial owner registers. And then if you look at transaction services, again, there's things that we sort of can't predict. Uh, you might have the need to form new entities or dissolve companies or have a director change, as I noted before. You might have needs for domiciliation or local director. And so as needed, these are services that we absolutely can provide. And then specialized services, which in large part come from our acquisition of the InterTrust Group, deal with things like accounting, tax, and payroll, going beyond just what some folks would call corporate services or what we call corporate secretarial in sort of a much deeper, broader service uh, uh, offering around uh, global compliance. And so uh, I could go on and on, but I want to make sure that we've got time to talk about business licensing and have time for uh, a demonstration of Navigator as well. So, Paul, I'll bring you back into the conversation to talk about licenses. Thank you again, David. So uh, David, when discussing the annual report uh, prep and file services that CSC offers, mentioned that one of the challenges there is managing the uh, complicated compliance requirements across uh, 50 jurisdictions. Uh, and so business license is a very similar uh, problem space, except that that space is exponentially larger. So instead of dealing with 50 jurisdictions, when we consider state, county, and city level uh, license requirements, you're, you're dealing with closer to 160,000 jurisdictions. So obviously that's a, a much more challenging space to be expert in. It's a much more challenging space to uh, keep track of, and it's a challenge for almost every organization. Um, so the, and, 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 and even beyond just the, those jurisdictions, there can also be uh, additional nuance and complexity for uh, industry-specific licenses. So as you just continue to layer and layer that complexity, again, this is just a really challenging space for, for a lot of organizations. And, and what they're up against are um, trying to avoid penalties when, when they file uh, licenses or renew licenses uh, after their, their expiration date. Uh, potential lawsuits, and and ultimately something that is a real uh, consequence of, of not having the proper licensing is, is actual business closure. So that can be especially damaging. I mean, that can be damaging on any date, any business, but that can be especially damaging if uh, if this is something that happens in the, in the context of opening a new location. There can often be a lot of, uh, you know, activity around that and trying to bring all of that together and then at the, and getting all the way to the, the finish line and finding that you can't uh, you can't open the doors because you're missing a license. That those kind of things happen all the time to businesses, and, and you know, so so those are the very real world concerns that that we are trying to address through our services around business licenses, and again, they're the concerns that our customers have stated over and over again. Um, you know, one of the most critical and difficult things uh, around managing all of those complex requirements, it's not only identifying what they are but making sure you have up-to-date, accurate information needed to 
support the filing of those um, those licenses and, and having that at your fingertips when you need it. Um, the reason that things get filed late or that they get misfiled or not filed uh, at all, it's, it's often because the information needed to file the license just can't uh, can't be acquired rapidly enough. So when we talk about solutions in this space, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more of those about those on the next slide, we're really talking about answering those specific problems, you know, that that knowledge deficit that that exists, that, you know, the complexity, the timing, and, and ultimately all of the the entity vitals and, and, and detail you need to to be able to file things appropriately. So as, as CSC looks to help our customers manage those challenges, uh, we, we basically have a, three different offerings, uh, some of which can be used in combination uh, and some that, that operate more as a standalone. But th the first one is just a, a research service. So again, really trying to address that knowledge gap. Uh, so CSC, uh, whether you're working to maintain the compliance of a, an existing location or open a new location, helping identify all the necessary licenses that need to be filed for that location to be in compliance. So basically to keep the doors open or to open the doors. Uh, so CSE can provi provide those research services. And, and again, that can be done for both existing and new locations. Um, you know, as, as I kind of describe these problems, uh, this brings up a lot of anxiety for people who have been uh, involved in this on any level. And, you know, one of the ways we can help with that anxiety is to make it our anxiety and not yours. So we offer a full service outsourcing solution. Uh, so you'll still have access and visibility to a full portfolio of your licenses within our CSE Navigator platform. Um, but you'll basically turn over the management of those licenses and, and making sure things are filed timely uh, and, and orderly to CSC. Um, for customers who want a more hands-on approach, they 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 feel like they've got a handle on how to do this well they just need a tool for managing the portfolio and and, and the requirements uh, we also offer a software solution which is what we see at the bottom of the slide here with our csc license pro solution so again that's that's software that helps you manage these compliance requirements it helps you stay up to date on the requirements uh, and gives you a place to put all of those critical and all the that critical information you need uh, to support the filing so again the research service can really be combined with either of the outsourcing or the software solution. Um, but again, this is another case where we're really trying to meet customers where they are and trying to make sure we have a solution appropriate to their specific uh, challenges in this space. And, and again, challenges in this space seem to be where almost everyone is living. It's, it's a very, uh, it's a very challenging space just because it's, it's just a huge amount of information that you've got to keep track of both in terms of your own information and the information about what the requirements are, you know, on in, in any given location for any given type of business. All right. So what we're going to move into next is, uh, has been often alluded to and promised is a demo of our CSC navigator platform. And I believe Caitlin's going to have some instructions for everyone as uh, David starts to uh, share his screen. Yes. Thanks. Paul. Um, so just a quick announcement here while David is um, launching the screen share window. So before we get started with the demonstration, you should see uh, the screen share window launch here shortly. Um, so in order to enlarge the window, click on the box in the top right corner of that window. And to make the window full screen, you'll want to click on the four arrows in that same top right corner. If you accidentally minimize the window, not a problem. You can relaunch the window by clicking on the media player widget, which is located on the bottom of your screen. And in case that screen share window does not launch, please go ahead and refresh your screen and that should uh, launch that window for you. So with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to David now to get us started with the demonstration. Great, thank you, Caitlin. And so this is gonna be a lean and mean demo. We wanna make sure that there's time for our final poll and for some Q&A as well. So we'll just get right to it. And so we're looking at what we call CSE Navigator, which of course we've referenced a few times along the presentation. And so I'll start with a, a brief overview of the uh, capabilities that come along with CSE acting as your registered agent from an entity standpoint. And then Paul will kind of guide me to show you some of the SOP capabilities as well. So we call this the Entity Portfolio Grid, where all the companies that CSE represents 
are visible and available to select to, to capture and view more information about. Um, and so I'm actually going to take that step right now. I'm going to click on a company called CSE Navigator Demo LLC. And by virtue of selecting that company, I am now at what we describe as the entity level, focusing on this one company. All of the data, just to be clear, is flowing in automatically from CSE acting as registered agent. Beyond the basic entity summary profile, if you take a look on the left-hand side of the screen, we call this your left-hand navigation, there's a jurisdictions link. So if I were to click here, you'll see very easily that there are registrations well beyond the state of Delaware. There's a whole slew of, of qualifications for this particular company. Now we've talked about our compliance calendar, which I'll look to show you, but I also wanna highlight while we're on this jurisdiction screen, a feature that we call corporate tracker. And so you'll see here, uh, an area called jurisdiction status. And so this is something that we update uh, in an automated fashion. Now the cadence does vary from one state to another, but on average, it's about every week to week and a half where CSC is proactively going out to the various secretary of state offices and pulling in the current status of your entity in that particular jurisdiction. And should that status change, not only could you see it in the solution, but, but more critically, we're gonna proactively notify you via email. So the calendar lets you know what's coming due when, as far as annual reports go, but then as an additional sort of layer of safety, we're also automatically checking the current status and again, bringing to your attention should that status ever change. Should you engage CSC to file any doing business as names, you'll see on the left-hand navigation, there's a link here for DBAs, where again, we're able to automatically have this data flow into the technology. And there's also a knowledge base for DBA renewals. And so um, some states you're fine once you register, you've got it, but in other cases, it might be a five year or 10 year renewal period. And so we have a calendar that automates visibility around when those names should be refiled if you would look to retain them. And that's actually something that we can even bundle into our annual report service. So you might say, well, CSE, while, I, while I've got you doing my annual reports, why don't you go ahead and, and take ownership? of renewing my DBAs as well. So that's another uh, outsource service that we can provide. Now, again, if you focus your attention on the left-hand side of the screen, we've got an entity filings folder. We've talked about, again, the, the idea of CSE doing a formation and tying the formation evidence, but it's really any type of document, like a qualification, it's a solution. If you specifically do engage CSE for the annual report service that we talked about, there is a folder dedicated to the evidence that comes back from those events. And then the last thing that I'll show you just due to time constraints within entity management is our good standing calendar. And then I'll kind of have Paul take us into SOP. And so this is another automated part of the technology where there's a knowledge base. Now it's telling me that nothing's happening in the next 30 days. So I'm gonna maybe back this up more towards the beginning of the year and bring in a little bit of a wider range so that we can see some examples here. So there's nothing that you have to build here. The knowledge is in the technology to understand what's due where when, not just in the States, but globally as well. And so in this case, it says in-house across the board for my so-called filing responsibility. That represents a client that's gonna do this themselves. But if you have CSE take ownership of the ad reports, that would say CSE managed to create a clear understanding that CSC is taking ownership of the filing on your behalf. So with that, I'm going to bring Paul back into the conversation and he's gonna kind of guide me a little bit as I go over into the My SOP area. So if you are a user that has the authority, to access SOP, uh, this is where you could go to view that. So Paul, I'll have you take over. Thank you, David. So uh, what we're looking at here is the SOP manager uh, solution that I referenced uh, in one of our earlier slides. Again, this is the offering that is available to all CSE registered agent customers by default. Um, again, for customers who have uh, higher volumes or more complex requirements, we do have those other solutions. Um, so the, the focus with this uh, is to give customers quick, simple, and easy access uh, to a, a tool that shows them everything they need without having to uh, kind of travel over a, a difficult learning curve. So what we're looking at here is uh, the summary grid. This is one of the two ways you can look at your service and process through the SAP Manager tool. This is going to show you all of your recent service and process with the most recent documents. Uh, at the top, this grid is customizable, so you can kind of pick and choose which data points you want displayed on the grid, you can adjust the date range. Uh, SAP Manager will be an ongoing repository for service and process. So as long as you're a CSE customer, you'll have access to all of your historical service and process through this tool. Uh, and David, if I can ask you to click on the document link for the first document listed. Sure. And so while this loads, uh, what we're looking at now is uh, the document details. So this is the other view of service or process. Uh, and this is what you would see if you came in through the link from one of our email notifications. It would bring you right to this view for the document that uh, you were being notified about. So what you'll have here 
On the right hand side of the screen is the full document image, which you can navigate through. So every page of every document is scanned and available to you through this application. Uh, and then the column just to the left of that is going to summarize the data that CSC has captured about that document. So that's basically the document vitals that I'll tell you plaintiff, defendant, case number, uh, the court that the matter was filed in, and, and who sent us the document, and a bunch of other critical details. Uh, and then, David, if I can have you go all the way back up to the top, all the way to the left here under where it says documents in this matter. Uh, what you would see there, uh, in this case, you see the single document, but if there had been prior documents received by CSC for your organization in the same matter, you would see those other documents listed. So you can see the, the recent document in the context of any historical documents that CSC received on your behalf that are relevant to the same matter. So trying to give you that broader context. So when you look at this, you kind of see the, the full picture of at least what CSC has available about this matter. Uh, and then the last thing that I'll draw your attention to is in the dark gray bar in the middle of the screen, you'll see over to the right side, there's a set of icons there. These are really those critical actions that we expect a user might need to take when they receive new service or process. So the envelope there is uh, allows you to email the document directly from the system uh, to anyone in your organization or to outside counsel or wherever else you need to send that document. Uh, the icon next to that allows you to quickly print the document. So if you want a hard copy so you can carry it into the office next door or wherever you need to uh, bring it, you can do that quickly. And then finally, the last icon, the one with the uh, arrow pointing down, that is a download icon. So you can uh, download this document. So if you need to upload it to a local uh, document storage, tool that you use within your organization, or if you need to add it to a, a matter management tool or something like that that your organization uses, that's a quick single click action. Uh, most of these things can also be done in bulk from the, the grid that we started at. So if you wanted to email or download uh, a group of documents all at once, you can do that as a single action. Uh, there's also a full range of search tools in here. So you can search not only uh, the metadata that we collect about each document, uh, but you can also search across the body of the document. So if you wanted to look at uh, all documents that are related to a specific plaintiff or uh, that came from a specific law firm, you could search those terms. And as long as those elements are available in the body of the document, it would return those results as a single result set. Um, there are lots of other bells and whistles here, but those are the major points. And I want to make sure we have time for the last uh, poll question and any uh, Q&A uh, that you may have. All right. Well, thank you both for a great presentation today. So we'll go ahead now and transition to our Q&A session, um, but please continue to submit any questions that you have. You should currently see our final poll question on your screen. Which compliance services would you like to be contacted about? You may select multiple options here, so please select all that would best fit your needs and hit submit, and someone will contact you accordingly. And just as a reminder, you can download a copy of today, today's materials from the resource widget. So we'll go ahead now and get started with some questions from the audience. And the first question we have, how does CSC notify their customers about new service of process documents? Uh, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, so I alluded to this a moment ago, but uh, whenever new service of process is received by CSC, we will send an email notification to the designated contacts uh, in your organization. That email will contain some summary information about the document, uh, essentially the data that we've collected to identify that document, uh, as well as a link to the, uh, the full image of the document within our SOP manager platform. Great. Our next question, is CSC able to provide any reporting related to service of process data and trends? Uh, absolutely. So um, within the application, uh, you have the ability to uh, kind of customize and filter your grid so you'll be able to see uh, your own information uh, in, in as far as the, the data uh, in any format that you want. And then you can download those results from the grid. If you're looking for uh, a more kind of presentation ready report, uh, CSC does have some standard reporting that can give you a summary of your, your SOP history over uh, a multi-year period. So we, we definitely do have that kind of reporting available. Awesome. So I'm keeping an eye on the clock here. And I think we have time for just another question. 
Um, let's see, how does CSC ensure that each service of process document is received and viewed by its customers? I'll, I'll take that one as well, David, uh, since these are all service of process. <laughs> um, yeah, so within the tool, uh, I think I may have glossed over this when we were looking at the uh, at the the demo, but there is uh, indicators in the grid uh, that show you whether you as an individual user have read a specific document. So just sort of like an email inbox, you can see uh, which items are read and unread. And then we also track uh, whether each document has been acknowledged by your organization. So if a document goes uh, more than a certain period of time without being acknowledged, we trigger additional notifications to alert you to a document that may have been missed. Uh, and then there's also ways to filter your grids within the tool uh, to identify unacknowledged documents. Uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, we can also generate some standard reporting around unacknowledged documents so we can kind of keep those front of mind until they've been addressed. Awesome, that's great. Um, I wanted to thank Paul and David again for a great presentation today. That's all the time that we have. If we didn't get to your question, we will contact you with a response after the webinar. Thank you to everyone who joined us today, and we hope to see you next time. Thanks, all. Thank you.